Hey Snips, give me a rainbow. So this video is actually all about the software, but as you can see here, I've been working on version two of the printed circuit boards as well. And this time around, I got the stencil produced for um, putting the solder paste on. So uh, this video is just running at five times speed at the moment, but this has massively sped up the rate at which I can knock these boards out. So, um, I mean, end to end this process, we're talking 10 minutes, including all the pick and paste and all the soldering and everything else. And that's doing them one board at a time. Um, I dare say I could be a bit more efficient if I was doing batches of five. But uh, in the meantime, it's Jim, the manual pick and paste machine, which I'm quite pleased with the speed I'm doing these at. You know, you don't, you don't have to be too fussy. It's actually a lot easier than you might think, because you don't have to be especially precise in the component placement. Uh, as I've kind of realised at this point, thinking actually everyone's watching me and it doesn't matter so much, I can just tack them on here. So uh, th now one of the changes on this board, I think I mentioned in the last video, was um, I changed the MOSFETs that were on there and uh, decided to put the components on the back side of the circuit board, so I'm dual side load now. But um, I found that actually gave me enough space to go from having four strips attached to potentially having 12 strips attached. Um, and with the larger power supply, hopefully it can support more than four. I don't know how far I can push it, but um, I was thinking I might just attach some arbitrary LED strings on there or some fairy lights or something like that at certain times of the year. Mostly the space was spare on the board. The components are uh, three or four quid, so kind of might as well put the extra bits on. And then uh, just heating the board up here and spreading a bit of heat around. Again, this video is just running at five times speed, but. It's only like a couple of minutes of your time that I'm taking up here and we will get into the software in a minute. But um, I just thought, now I will point out here that it's very difficult soldering with the camera in the way, but actually all of this work you've seen me doing, including placing components, I had the camera in the way, I was reaching around the camera for doing this. Um, I don't think I could have done that with through hole components. So um, bizarrely, this has been way, way easier than doing it with through hole. Anyway, um, just uh, getting some extra heat here. For some reason, pin one on these transistors, which actually connects to the ground plane, that's the reason, um, seems to need a bit of extra heat. So uh, I've just been doing that. That board's very hot. This time, yeah. So there's some I prepared earlier, and here's the only one I've finished so far. Um, and here's just a little clip of... Uh, oh, I've also modified the lamps. I think I mentioned I was going to do that. So I've now got 60 pixels, 64 pixels down the middle and the ice blue has changed to 144 pixels per meter as well and just a little demo to show that it is actually up and working and uh, obviously this actually looks a lot better with a bit of diffusion material over the top of it so let's just get a piece of that in here we go and uh, yeah there we are that's how we look so all seven lights that i've got up on the ceiling are now with the higher pixel density and uh, let's get on with the software Okay, so as my video editing software just crashed and we lost 90 minutes worth of editing, you're going to get a slightly better video with a slightly better description. So I thought I'd give a really quick recap of what the hardware is and how it works. So front side of the circuit board are just power supplies. Um, back side of the circuit board is clever gubbins. Uh, these things here are individually addressable LED pixels. The strips either side are just bulk, high efficiency, massive light output strips. Um, so each one of these Neo pixels, let's move into a smaller strip, each of these individual pixels is actually a little shift register and four LEDs. And I've drawn up a representation here of what's going on. So you clock data in at one side and it'll go bit by bit all the way through up the reds, down the greens, up the blues, down the whites, and you keep sending data through and it ripples through this big long chain all the way until it comes out the other end. So that's this little strip here. That's what these NeoPixels do, or these technically aren't NeoPixels, but that's what these individually addressable LEDs all do. Send the data in and it ripples through, and when the data stops moving, the LEDs get their new numbers and their new brightness levels. So what I've done with the gubbins on the back here, so what we've actually done is we've hijacked this big long shift register that's going along here. And we've got these little chips here that are doing the hijacking for us. And we're sending the signal from those chips off to some big power transistors. And those are then controlling these big bulk high efficiency strips. So each one of our lamp modules is actually 12 pixels or 12 channels 
that we've hijacked, followed by normal RGB WLEDs. So each of these lamp modules is actually a set of these strips at the start, followed by 64 individually addressable LEDs. So that's a total of 67 virtual or three virtual LEDs and 64 real ones. So 67 per lamp module. And then I've got seven of these lamp modules. So I need software that will generate this bit sequence that goes through all the different lamps and gets the color scheme that we need and sends it out there. So I'll show you how I did it. Okay, so here we are inside my text editor. I, I like Ultra Reddit. I've been using it for many, many decades. And uh, let, let's start kind of from the bottom up. So this is an animation plugin and we can tell it's an animation plugin because we've said it's class animation. And every animation plugin has a method called emit row, at which point it will emit everything that's needed for a full line of LEDs to be shown. So if I just do something that you can't see. Uh, so here we go. I've now added in the sweep animation onto the stack and we can see that that is working its way along there. And this will just repeat when it reaches the end. So just looking through the code, all we're basically doing is we start off at position zero. Every time we go through this loop, we add one to the position and we output a row of pixels where the current position is set to maximum red, green, blue, and white. So we get a very white pixel and it just loops around. So every time we get to the maximum LED, we reset back to zero and we just loop round and around. So not a very exciting effect, but um, a good place to start to see what we're working with. So along the similar lines, we've got another one here that's again, fairly simple. So this one's called The Chase. Um, this is kind of called The Chase after the old Milky Way advert. Um, so I thought we'd set up one of those. So we have two different ones. We've got a red car there and a blue car here. And each time that we emit another row, we move forward a random amount between zero and two pixels at a time. So if I add that one into the mix now, and we should see we've now got a red and a blue working their way from right to left or left to right. I'm not sure which way it is for you looking at it. For me, it's left to right that they're working. You can see we've kind of combined these two animations together here. Okay, that's cool, but how is this actually working? I mean, I've shown you the plugins, but not how they run. So we're using the Python Twisted Framework, which is an event-driven framework. And one of the particular things in there, and amongst all the other amazing things it does, is this looping call thing. So uh, 50 times a second currently, we're calling service LEDs. And the service LEDs function is actually pretty straightforward. Um, so what we do is we're using the Python NumPy library for fast array maths. And we create ourselves an empty array with the number of LEDs we've got, which in my case is 469, four bytes per LED, because they're 32 bits per pixel effectively. And I want them all to be zeros to begin with. And then we work through each animation in turn. So it's just a list of them. And for each animation, we choose the maximum value of whether it was the existing thing, which started out as all zeros, or the animation that we're emitting the row from. So as a for example, if, green, if one animation was putting out green at 20% and the other animation was putting out green at 40%, the result is going to be 40%. And we've got two of these little loops. This one here is actually doing the um, warm white, cool white, daylight white strips. And then a similar one here doing the RGB strips. And then uh, a little further down, so we're, we've got here, we scale the master brightness value. So we multiply it by a number from zero to one, um, and then we convert it back into unsigned integers again. And then uh, we do a similar thing. Oh no, we've done that, sorry. We do a similar thing for the RGB color tints as well up there. And then once we've done that, we go through and we uh, change our data back from being individual RGB back to 32-bit data here and we um, load that into the array of the WS281X strip library that I'm using. Um, and at the end of all of that, oh, sorry, I should say, so this one's also, here we're taking into account the modulo of the 
Oh, where's the maths here? Here we are. So yeah, this is the modulo function. So basically, if the pixel we're doing is one of the strip LEDs, then we do this. If it's one of the RGB LEDs, we do this. And once we've built up the array of data, we send it off to strip.show. Um, so that, that currently runs through about 25 times a second. Um, it's quite a lot of number crunching going on. I will work to improve that or possibly offload to a GPU or something like that. Anyway, that's kind of the internal gubbins. So let's go and have a look at another effect. Uh, this one was written by my daughter when she was 12. So she said this one was like randomized colored dots and then they increase on both sides, getting closer and closer into the middle. So in here, again, we're an animation. Um, we have some predefined colors. So we've got eight predefined colors. And each time we go through, we select our position. Um, we pick a random color, we add it onto the list. So I'll just, and we'll add in crumbling in. Okay, so here we go. Now we've got this one working its way across. And uh, this one was prepared by my daughter. Um, of course, in addition to all of those, so we'll just get rid of that one. We still have the originals that you've seen before. So we've got the image repeater that I used in a different video. And then down here, we're just going through each row in the image one line at a time. In addition to what we're doing with the set of RGB pixels down the middle, uh, we can do similar things with our mainly white colored strips. So this is a different class of object. This is a strip animation, whereas the ones I've shown so far have just been animations. And the difference is a strip animation works on the warm white, cool white, daylight white strips rather than on the RGB strips. So if I add that one in, there we go. Then we start to do a sweep from left to right on the white strips. And at the moment we start off on natural white, I think, and after a while we'll switch over to daylight white or ice blue. But we're just trying to fade across as we go um, with kind of the brighter, stronger light colors. So there we go, we switch to the ice blue there. And again, we're just fading left to right over and over again. So you've heard me typing away in the background there. So I thought I'd show you the interface that I've been using while I've been making this video. So um, because I'm a DevOps guy and I spend all my time SSH into computers, the obvious interface that I'm going to use first of all was um, SSH. Actually, I had a console based interface, but because I wanted this to run in the background and not require the computer to be logged in, I needed it to run over the network. So. Um, First thing I did was set up an SSH thing and it's all using public private keys for authentications. And I've got a little command line interface so it can show me what different commands do and what things are. So um, for example, from within here, I can do things like set the warm white strips to 10 out of 255 maximum. And I can set ice blue to 10 as a for example, or turn them back to zero again. Um, I'll show you one of my favorite animations here. So. I came up with this one a while ago. Um, this one takes an image and I'll put the image in the video and it selects the lowest value of each pixel, um, finds the lowest values throughout the image and then sends them off um, just to one set of the strips. Let me uh, get rid of the, uh, get rid of the warm whites there. So this is just taking the lowest value and it's a picture of a bunch of stars and I'm sending that through to the white strips. But I, I can send it through to red, blue, green, or the white. So just for uh, fun, we'll do, oh, sorry, press the wrong button. Uh, we'll send through to the blue as well. And it takes a little while while it fetches the image from the internet and processes it. But once it's done that, it runs along quite happily. So um, I'm really quite pleased with that. That gives me a lot of flexibility in terms of what I can do. Um, I can add in extra animations. So we'll add in the set, uh, sorry, wrong one there. Um, Strip sweep. That's the one I wanted. So that's the one I showed earlier on with kind of a array of sunshine moving across from one side of the desk to the other. Um, uh, I've got the opposite one. Uh, so that one's a cloud moving across and the rest of the room is in really quite brilliant sunshine. Uh, quite significant. Um, I can do similar things if I want just a certain set of strips on or a certain set of colors. I can have a plugin, say, for doing electronics over my workbench um, or something that's just, you know, evening light over the desk in the office, but not the whole of the rest of the room. Let's get rid of that one. 
Um, and I think we'll stick like that for now. So um, I didn't stop at that with the interface, of course, because having to boot up a computer and SSH in to switch the lights on is um, not the best interface at all. So what I came up with was um, this. Hey, Snips. Warm white 10%. Uh, cool, that's pretty good. Um, should we try a different one? Hey, Snips. I'm going to bed now. So, uh, also quite nice. Um, what else can I do? Hey, Snips. Can I have a rainbow? Cool. Uh, now, I'm not sure how well this will show up on the camera because the camera tends to correct for the white balance all by itself. I suppose I could lock that, but meh, that's what good video people do. Um, hey, Snips. Scale blue to 10%. So that's taken out most of the blue that was in our RGB spectrum. Uh, should, we, should we get rid of some more? Uh, hey, Snips. Scale green to 10%. And uh, this is, we're not quite there yet, but there's, hey, Snips. Um, now, Snips actually takes about five seconds to rearm each time, so I have to leave a little delay before I can say more things. And it trips me up every time. Hey, Snips. Warm white, 25%. Uh, that's one of my favourite evening settings, and uh, I'll turn the camera around because it's kind of pointless staring at this now because all the action happens the opposite way around with the lighting in the room. So let's say, for example, that I wanted to do some video making for YouTube and I then want a good strong daylight whites. It's about five and a half thousand, six and a half thousand colour temperature. So let's do both of those. Um, hey, Snips. Daylight white, 100%. And that's kind of blinding. But uh, hopefully it looks a bit better on the internet. And uh, we'll add in a bit of uh, a warmer white as well. So, hey, Snips. Natural white, 100%. And there we go. Uh, really looking quite good. Fine colour there. Um, but that's kind of what I needed. So the lights do pretty much whatever I want. Anyway, I'll give you a quick look at how Snips is all strung together. Because that, I, I am so, so impressed with Snips. I mean, if you work for Snips and you're watching this, you guys are amazing. Snips is an incredible voice recognition library. It was designed from the ground up to run on the Raspberry Pi. Not in the cloud, not the Raspberry Pi taking your voice samples and sending it somewhere else for processing. It's all processed directly on the Raspberry Pi. And the way that Snips works is it has a very limited training set. So my voice recognition thing recognises perhaps 200 words in total, and that's all it does. So um, you go to the SNPs website and you create a training file for your AI, for your bot with whatever you want. So the one for mine is about 20 megabytes in size. Let, let, let's have a look at it now. Okay, so this is the SNPs website, or this is the console bit of SNPs, where you configure your assistant. So for my assistant, I've got a couple of built-in things, or a couple of things that other people wrote. So this one by Sir Builds A Lot. Hey Snips, good morning. Hi. Uh, how about town date check? Hey Snips, what's the date? Today is April 29th. And uh, here's my one. So I'll, I'll click on edit. So Snips works with, you, you configure intents. So things that you want it to do. So as a for example here, I've got an intent for lights off, for when I want all the lights to be switched off. I've got a different intent here for brightness that lets me uh, change the brightness of things. Oh, that's another thing I must show you. Um, so, uh, yeah, and, you know, adding different things. Oh, I didn't realise I had that one as a thing all on its own. Um, so let, let's have a look at one of these things. So as a for example, we want to add a thing. So um, here, here's the words I've given. Um, so first of all, here's the slot. So the slot, I, I've given it a custom thing, um, and the slot is all the names of the things that I want to be able to add or remove. And actually, we'll add, we'll add Twinkle in, because we haven't done that yet. We'll add that. Um, and we'll add 
that one. Okay, I think that should do. So we've now got some extra words that this will recognize. So it's now training up for my assistant. And once that's trained up, it'll give me a file that I can use to deploy the assistant. So there we are, it says deploy assistant, 18 megabytes. And you can download it and copy the file onto the Raspberry Pi yourself, or it gives you a command you can run on the Raspberry Pi. And that, that's kind of all there is to it. And it's beautiful in its simplicity. I mean, it really is fantastic that you give it the words you want it to know, and they give you the voice training file. And this is all open source, and it's, it's certainly free to use for hobby at the moment. Um, I mean, they must have a business model at some point whereby they'll actually make some money. But um, so, so far, it, it's all free to me, for me to use. And I guess they're hoping that, you know, people will turn it into products, at which point there'll be licensing deals to be done. But, I mean, I, I'm just amazed by this. It's incredible. So um, let's pick another thing. Um, the brightness. So the, the ways that I control the brightness. So um, I think you've probably already seen, I said... Uh, scale channel to 10% or scale blue to 10%. Um, but this lets me control the overall brightness of the strips or individual red, green, blue brightness and change the color balance. And so in fact, here's, here's what I've got in my channel. So I've got natural white, daylight white. So it recognizes all the different words and it will feed them through to my code. Um, so let, let's have a, a quick look at the code, I suppose, as well. So we have our twinkle animation running there. Uh, let's see what happens. So here we have the console output log for Digital Sky. I just wanted to show you kind of how the integration with SNPs is working here and how the messages get delivered to me. So um, here we go. Hey SNPs, uh, get rid of the twinkle. Okay, so let's just have a look here what we've got. So these SNPs delivers these messages to us using MQTT, which is a message bus. And every message that comes through will come through with a topic. So for example, in this case, the topic was Hermes Intent Jim Connor, and the intent was delete, which was our get rid of a thing that we said. And then it, it's found the input, get rid of the twinkle, and uh, again, it gives us the breakdown of each th each word in turn and its confidence value for it. So get, it was 96% confidence, uh, rid, 100% confident, so on and so forth. And then at the end of it, it also gives us the raw values of the data. So in this case, it was a, a custom value that we defined and the value was the word twinkle, spelt exactly like that. Um, along similar lines, if I said, hey, snips, Get rid of the image repeater. And this time it's come through and it's correctly given us the image underscore repeater as the thing it wants to get rid of. So um, I'll just show you the code for this as well. So let me uh, switch the Windows recorder to recording a different thing. So here we go. So most of the clever tricks actually fall down to these six lines of code here. So when we detect the intent was to add a thing, um, we, we basically take whatever the value was that came through in that raw data, and we, uh, uh, we call our method that says add animation and we pass that string to it. So if we say add a rainbow, um, the value will come through as rainbow and we call my add animation function with rainbow. And similarly, when the intent comes through as delete, we print an, a log message out, and then um, we call my delete animation method, and we're just passing in the, the words that SNPs fed across to us. And uh, this is basically the entirety of all of my voice integration is, um, well, that fits, fits cleanly on one screen. I've got rid of the unfortunate dust stain on the front. It was just dust, but it's gone now, so this looks much better. Um, anyway, I think that's about enough for one video. We're over 20 minutes long at this point. This is by no means the end of the project. Um, version two of the circuit boards had a few little tiny minor things that I've tweaked. So I'm waiting for version 2.1 to arrive. Um, that'll let me do the other seven lights on the opposite side of the beam down the center of my ceiling. So um, still got to do that. I'm still working on the software, but I just thought it was in kind of a good enough state to show you where I'm going with it. So I think I might make an offer at this point. 
I've got five of these version one circuit boards left over. Um, they're not ideal because the power supplies burn out if you have the full number of white strips that I've got on them. However, they do work and they're certainly good for powering the um, RGB individually addressable ones down the middle and a little bit of extra load on them, just not the uh, 60 watts I was trying to pull through them. So um, if anyone wants one of these, um, write me an animation, write me a module, write me a plugin and uh, submit it on GitHub and I'll send one of these to you. Um, and see if any, we get any takers. If not, I'll probably end up giving them away to someone, but I thought I'd make the offer. Anyway, thanks for spending some time with me, folks, and uh, hope you found this enjoyable and uh, interesting. And, um, well, stay tuned for the next one. It may be quite a while, several months, because um, the weather's nice out now, and I haven't ordered all the bits yet, and they'll take a good six or eight weeks to arrive. Um, but I'll, I'll give you another update on this project when I've got a bit further through it. Anyway, thanks again. See you next time. Bye. Hey, Snips. Lights off.